rising 2,200 feet above the Tennessee River Valley near Chattanooga, Tennessee. Lookout Mountain is a timeless presence and central to the area's human history. As early as 200 BC, Native Americans hunted its lush forest and sheltered in its many caves. One of the last battles of the American Revolution was fought here in 1782. And on a mist-shrouded November day in 1863, it was the scene of the Civil War battle above the clouds. In gentler times, families of means escaped summer's heat in cottages atop the mountain. Today, the mountain presides over a newly vibrant Chattanooga, a city experiencing a renaissance on the river, a place ranked among America's best for family vacations. Thousands of visitors are attracted by Lookout Mountain's rich human history and majestic scenery. But far more come to experience two places whose origins predate all the rest by millions of years. At Rock City in Ruby Falls, the attraction is the fantastic living history of the mountain itself. The natural history of Lookout Mountain, Rock City and Ruby Falls began on an ancient seabed where the skeletons of small creatures accumulated forming layers of limestone. Successive layers of shale, sand, and pebbly sand were deposited on top and gradually hardened into sedimentary rock. Some 300 million years ago, at the close of the Paleozoic era, a powerful earthquake, or more likely a series of them, caused the layers of the rock to bend upwards, forming the Cumberland Plateau, of which Lookout Mountain is a part. These massive layers, as well as smaller chips from them, were shaped through physical weathering by wind, water, and plants into the formations you see today at Rock City. The Lookout Mountain caverns were also created by weathering. As brittle layers of limestone and sandstone rose from the ocean floor during the earthquakes, fault lines formed. Subterranean streams found their way through the faults and the water combined with carbon dioxide formed carbonic acid, which gradually dissolved the limestone. This chemical weathering process formed two separate chambers, a lower cave, which lies about 50 feet above the Tennessee River, and directly above it, the cave containing the remarkable Ruby Falls. Weathering continues today, continually reshaping Rock City and Ruby Falls, yet the changes are imperceptible. For the many visitors who return with their children and grandchildren, with their friends and family, these natural wonders appear timeless and unchanging. Just as in their geologic creation, the development of Rock City and Ruby Falls as world-famed attractions are closely parallel in time. Their histories are uniquely American, each one featuring a visionary couple driven by appreciation for the unique geography of the area and entrepreneurial spirit. Both places have their roots in the Roaring Twenties, a time of bootleg whiskey, raccoon coats, and razzmatazz. The story of Ruby Falls begins in 1923, when Chattanoogan Leo Lambert formed a corporation to open the original Lookout Mountain Cave. The cave's opening on the banks of the Tennessee River had been sealed since the 1905 construction of a southern railway tunnel through the edge of the mountain. The cave had been used for centuries as a Native American campsite, outlaw hideout, and Civil War hospital. It even boasted the signature of the seventh U.S. president, Andrew Jackson. Lambert, a caving enthusiast, believed this history made the cave a sure bet as a tourist attraction. But not even he could anticipate the real treasure held by the mountain's secret heart. His corporation purchased land on the side of Lookout Mountain and in 1928 began drilling an elevator shaft down to the cave below. 260 feet into the limestone rock, cool air suddenly gusted to the surface of the drill hole. Intrigued, Lambert descended into the drilling shaft and discovered a crevice just two feet high by four feet wide that disappeared into the side of the mountain. It was an invitation no caver could resist. Traveling for 17 hours in total darkness, most of the time on his hands and knees, 
Lambert stumbled upon a large cavern filled with breathtaking rock formations and mineral deposits and a magnificent waterfall. When he returned to the surface, his description was so incredible that listeners refused to believe him. Accompanied by his intrepid wife, Ruby, Lambert descended once more to the falls. And when I came back and told the boys up top what I had seen, they decided it was true. Mr. Lambert decided to develop both caves, and once the drilling was complete, used limestone excavated from the elevator shaft to construct the entrance building, modeling it after a 15th century Irish castle. When the caverns opened in 1929, Ruby Falls quickly proved to be the star attraction. And in 1935, Lambert ordered the original cavern sealed once more. In the years since its discovery, millions of visitors, ordinary folk, and celebrities have been awestruck by the surreal beauty and wonder of this world deep inside the mountain. There is a citadel of rocks atop the mountain where boulders of immense size are arranged in such a way as to afford streets and lanes. In 1924, Tennessee native Garnet Carter and his wife Frida, the daughter of German immigrants, purchased a tract of land on Lookout Mountain. Garnet, an energetic and successful businessman, envisioned a residential neighborhood and luxury inn atop the mountain. He planned to attract visitors to Fairyland, so named in honor of Frida's love of European folklore with a golf course, but construction lagged behind schedule. Garnet downsized his plan, creating America's first miniature golf course to provide entertainment for guests at the inn he developed and sparking a nationwide craze. Soon, he was franchising his Tom Thumb golf across America. Frida, meanwhile, explored the site of their future home. The land contained an area of dramatic rock formations already named Rock City by the sightseers who had since the 1800s ridden mules through the naturally formed streets and avenues. Imagination fired by the ancient stonescapes, the artistic Frida soon immersed herself in designing gardens. Local workmen built winding stone trails and rustic bridges and transplanted native wildflowers, shrubs and trees to complement the gigantic rock formations. Although she designed the landscapes as a hobby, Frida dreamed of one day opening her gardens to the public. Garnet indulged his wife's passion but didn't recognize the true potential of the rock gardens until his Fairyland Inn and Tom Thumb Golf became casualties of the Great Depression. But as the country began to recover, Chattanooga began to boom. The city long home to the country's first Coca-Cola bottling plant, was growing into an important center of industry and manufacturing because its strategic location on the river made transporting raw materials and finished products easier. And transportation was getting easier for regular folks too. More and more people owned automobiles and they loved to be in them. Ever the entrepreneur, Garnet sensed opportunity in the improving economy and the newly mobile public. Opening Frida's Rock City Gardens in 1932, he theorized that the public would pay to see such a unique natural attraction. Just one year after opening, the gardens received an award from the Garden Club of America. In 1936, Garnet proved his genius for promotion once more. Rock City lay on a side road. In an effort to attract even more drivers, he dreamed up a new kind of road sign, one that would ultimately become as famous as Rock City itself. Summoning a young painter named Clark Byers, he told him of his scheme to paint an advertising message on the roofs of barns alongside major highways. Years later, Byers recall, I asked him what we'd paint on them, and Mr. Carter passed me a scrap of paper across the table that had three words on it, See Rock City. Byers was soon traveling year-round in his pickup, asking farmers if he could paint their barns. By the 1950s, Garnet's message was painted on over 800 roofs, from Michigan to Texas to Florida. Journalists began calling Clark and his helpers the Barnyard Rembrandts, and vacationers by the thousands heeded the call to see Rock City. Today, fewer than 70 of the barns remain. 
much loved pieces of Americana. The simple slogan holds icon status in American advertising, and the vast array of other items emblazoned with Sea Rock City have become desirable collector's items, sought in antique shops, and sold on eBay. There's even a Rock City birdhouse in the permanent collection of the Smithsonian Museum. Though the speed of cars and the pace of American life have increased dramatically since those early days, Ruby Falls and Rock City have remained essentially as they were, and perhaps that accounts for their continued popularity. Hosting nearly half a million visitors each year, these two wonders of nature have never lost their ability to enchant, amaze, and inform. People return again and again to visit their favorite sites against the ever-changing backdrop of Lookout Mountain. Lush with blooms in spring and summer, aflame with reds and golds in autumn. Dramatic and moody in winter. Still others return, bringing children and grandchildren to experience the thrill of discovery through the eyes of a child. The journey into Lookout Mountain Caverns is like no other. 1,120 feet below the summit of Lookout Mountain, this is the deepest commercial cavern in the United States and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The cave is home to a wealth of formations. Stalactites which hang from the ceiling, stalagmites growing from the floor, and columns, created when stalactites and stalagmites grow together, are formed when calcium carbonate, deposited by water dripping from the ceiling, crystallizes as calcite. The agonizingly slow process, about one cubic inch per 100 to 150 years, creates fantastic structures. the pillar-like cactus and candle, the onyx column, and this, the cave's largest formation, the massive leaning tower, estimated to be between three and five million years old. Thin sheets of calcite deposited by water flowing along a flat surface created frozen Niagara, a spectacular example of flowstone. Sometimes, Water emerging through a small crack evaporates before it can fall to the cave floor, causing thin strips of calcite to grow into delicate drape formations, like the Arabian drapery. Helictites, like those adorning Hall of Dreams, grow without regard for gravity because their calcite crystals are not arranged in a symmetrical order these formations assumed a curved shape. As lovely as these formations are, they cannot match the majestic beauty of the falls. At the end of a 2,160 foot chamber lies a vertical shaft, and through it, the pristine waters of an underground stream drop 145 feet to a pool on the cave floor below. The exact beginning and ending points of the stream are not known. The eerily beautiful sights inside the mountain aren't easily forgotten upon returning to the Earth's surface. Standing atop the observation tower, looking for miles in all directions, many visitors can't help but wonder what undiscovered marvels lay beneath the land they survey. In a letter to his wife during the Civil War in 1863, Union Major Connolly said, if tomorrow's a clear day, I'm going to ride up to the top of Lookout Mountain. It is said one can see seven states from its summit. At Rock City, every site is a spectacular one. Panoramic vistas stretch away in every direction. Viewed from 1,700 feet above sea level, details of the landscape shrink to near insignificance. But along the Enchanted Trail, it is the visitors who become small dwarfed by towering 200 million year old rocks. Meandering through the 14 acre site, the Enchanted Trail offers unequaled insights into both the power and intricacies of the natural world every step of the way. Abundant plantings, featuring more than 400 indigenous species of wildflowers, shrubs and trees, 
and delicate mosses, which thrive in the microclimates created by the rocks and the moisture seeping from them, provide a rich textural contrast to the massive stonescapes. A deep gash cut millions of years ago by flowing waters becomes a grand corridor leading to other natural wonders, including the deer park, forest home to rare white fallow deer, descended from European stock imported by Garnet Carter in the 30s. Lover's Leap with its 100-foot waterfall is a sight steep in legend. It is said that here, Nakuchi, a beautiful Cherokee maiden, leaped to her death following her lover who had been thrown from the point by her angry tribe. Swing Along Bridge, a 180-foot trail across the sky which offers the adventurous opportunities for truly amazing photographs. As does the 1,000-ton balanced rock impossibly perched atop two tiny points. At Rock City, there's truly something for everyone. The youngest visitors are entranced by the scenes from favorite fairy tales in Fairyland Caverns and love visiting Mother Goose Village, where storybook characters come to life. And for scores of families, visiting the enchanted corn maze in the fall and the holiday season's enchanted Garden of Lights have become much anticipated annual activities. And while new elements continue to be added, what many folks love best about Rock City is that no matter how many times they visit, they find the monumental rock formations as awe-inspiring, the views as spectacular as they remember. For many, returning to Rock City is comforting confirmation that in this ever-changing world of ours, there are things that endure, and that is good. Beautifully landscaped grounds with room for the kids to play and a variety of amenities including snack bars, restaurants and interesting gift shops make visiting Rock City and Ruby Falls even more enjoyable. And Chattanooga's location on Interstates 75 and 24 puts it within a day's drive of many major cities so it is the ideal destination for a weekend getaway. But there's more than a weekend's worth of interesting and fun things to see and do on Lookout Mountain. Adjacent to Point Park, Battles for Chattanooga is the perfect starting point for a visit to the Chattanooga area's Civil War historic sites. Then, walk over to Point Park. Point Park and the Craven House, historic touchstones of the Civil War battle above the clouds. The thrilling and spectacular mile-long trip up the mountainside above Chattanooga's 1895 Incline Railway, the steepest passenger incline in the world. Hiking and mountain biking, even hang gliding, in some of the most beautiful country in the southeast. No matter what the season, there's always a reason to see Rock City. Ruby Falls, and Lookout Mountain. We hope you'll visit us again soon. <laughs>